Okay, I'm back, and here is the finished product. Um, this, I had a lot of kind of like little reservations, and I wasn't really that that pleased with how this turned out. And I even questioned myself as if I was going to do this video or not. Uh, but not, then I said to myself, you know what? This is a great video to kind of put in perspective like uh, what what not to do um, and I'll, I'll explain myself in the video so this is the oil wash technique and the back of this entire piece is done in acrylic paint um, it has to me like a little bit of a, a whimsical look it almost looks a little cartoonish that's not the look I was going for, but you know, the mistake that I made, I haven't done this oil wash technique in a while, and the reason it looks like this is because I did go heavy, and I, I, I realized, you know, it's been a while since I did this technique. I'm a pan in close on the face so you can see. I mean, overall, I was still pleased with the likeness and all, but it's because I went heavy on the on the wash that uh, it, it made it really difficult to get the kind of effect that I wanted which was more of a kind of photographic effect and there again in this video I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through and go to two other oil wash techniques and then hopefully you'll be able to see and make the comparison yourself so in general I'll be real quick um, like I said I didn't want to you know spend time on going through the process but let's go to my references here Here's the actual picture of the gentleman of my friend's father. Um, as you can see, it's a black and white photograph. I don't have the printed photographs uh, by my side because I kind of worked with them to get the right complexion and hue. And color tone off of, off of another phone actually. So I didn't, I didn't print those out. It didn't take much because you know it was three basic colors that I use kind of for me the less you use on the palette so far as the color pigmentation the better so I just use like a, a dark brown uh, white and then let's see what I use white yellow and a lighter brown and then you could intermingle between variations of hues like so I had three other browns that I used um, I had two other oranges that I used and then you kind of just use them to blend them in. Uh, I'm not going into there again. I'm not showing exactly because this is more, I guess, for the, the advanced user. If you use Prismacolor or color pencil on a regular, uh, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. And then you can use various blending techniques to to get the the tone of the of the skin and those those shadows blended like you want to. Um, there again, it's a variety of techniques you can use for that. Um, um, there again, I'm kind of jump starting and. Forgive me, and I hope I don't upset people for who, who want to see how this is done. But there again, like I've said, it's for the more advanced person who already knows or uses these this the the, the color pencils as a regular technique of of, um, of your daily practices and in, in however you apply it, portraits or whatever. Um, so let me try to pan up a little bit more. Um, there again, just basic acrylics here used for the background for the stars uh, for the the back drop of the flag uh, there's the reference piece I used for that that my friend sent me so kind of just lifted that that's actually like a re reflection off of, of my phone again um, that I printed out so you can see the comparison there um, there's her father and there's the son and I, you know, took from him, I was able to use his military attire. And I, there again, I placed that on her dad here. So I'm going to just come down a little bit so you can see I did the shoulder there, the actual, uh, this is called, I think, the ribbon for the particular um, class that he was in. He was airborne, first class, I believe. And... Um, the ranking she said wasn't important so she came, gave me a lot of liberty and said it didn't have to be extremely accurate um, green coat for the most part and um, and, th and there you have it so 
that's it in, in, a, in a nutshell. Um, there's, I'm going to show this reference here, but that's the piece I used there. First Airborne. Uh, that was something that she stated to me that was really important, so I made sure I had that in there. Everything else she was, um, she said, take the liberty on doing what I wanted to kind of complete and, and get it down. Um, jump back over here to the hat, the beret that they wear. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't even mention that, but what I did to this to kind of make that stand out a little bit more is that I, I cut out, I did a cutout, <laughs> and it's it's not as exact as I want it to be, but it gets the point across. Um, and as you can see, it gives it a little bit of a relief there, and, it, and it's raised. Uh, so I painted that separately, and I glued that down um, just to give it some extra dimension and depth um, so that stands out a little bit more. Um, one thing I use that's going to really make this piece stand out is that, um, sorry, I'm going to just reach over here and, and show you this Krylon. This Krylon clear gaze, uh, this actually protects the piece and this actually, uh, this is triple, triple thick crystal clear glaze. For me in particular, what I noticed that this glaze does, they also, I don't know if they still make them, but they used to have some um, clear coats that were um, that re had a UV mixture in them. Now, how effective they are, I'm not certain, but I used to use those a lot too. I used to, I thought that they were great. Nevertheless, the overall point in using these glazes is not only it protects the piece from smudging, but it also um, it it to me it grounds any of the pigments and it gives extra dimension so these colors like once I use it I'll probably do one more video take after I use that because I want to use it outside once I seal well it's, it's also a sealant but uh, for me and you're gonna see this whole thing is gonna be glossy and it's gonna pop it's gonna really give extra depth and dimension and and for me what I think it personally does as well is that it will give a whole nother life and it will make this piece to me look a, a bit more realistic it's going to really jump off of this board i'm using a illustration board here and this board is pretty thick i don't even know if they make them anymore but this is a um just turn it over so you can see this is a, a number 80 um bainbridge board and i use these as a cold press finish i use these a lot throughout school and for using this technique that's the one thing i forgot to mention i'm so sorry for everyone that I I did not mention that this board is a prime and a key element for using an oil wash technique it's a thick board and because it being thick um, I don't even know if they make them because they did stop making some of them but a, a single single ply does just as well as a double ply but a double ply is what we've always used in school and they gave the best res results they're very durable and it's a uh, very nice thick proof of a of a stock to get the right effect so that's kind of it for this piece i'm going to end it with that and then i'm going to walk through and i'm just going to show you there again these are my references again uh there again that's my finished piece and i'm going to show you in my personal opinion some of the i don't want I'm, I'm pleased with this and um there again the person i'm doing this for this is just a commemorative piece so she stated that it didn't have to be perfect they just wanted something in his in his military attire just just for them personally to have at a memorial service. And um, she like I said, she gave me free liberty and I'm sure she'll be pleased with this. Um. I'm, I am pleased with it, but I, I did wish, I do wish that I could have um, just gotten the technique down a, a, a bit stronger. But I am satisfied with it. Now I'm going to take a quick walk over here to one of my favorite pieces that, um, and forgive all of the glare and everything, and this may not be the best lighting. But um, this piece here is how, to me, a success of in the correct way of how you want to do an oil wash. Um, <laughs> there again, I'm, I don't think I'm, I'm going to try to stand up here on these stairs and I'm just pan down. But um, this piece here, uh, what makes this such a success to me is if you look at the 
actual way the oil wash is applied it's, it's applied to the entire piece uh, it's done with as you can see it's an orange tint so that orange tint was done with actually orange um, oil with a white mixture and a yellow and those were the three types of um, paints that were used to get this desired effect here um, the wash was laid down very light then you go in and there as before in the earlier videos you see you pick out the highlights and that light look is kind of what you want to strive to achieve. I don't have, this image was actually taken out of a magazine. It was a hair magazine. Um, a lot of people that have seen it really like it a lot. I haven't sold it. I, I kept it for myself. Um, so for the most part, you can, if I had it, I, I wish I had the actual piece so that I could do a comparison but it, it achieved the desired effect perfectly forgive the glare um, with, when you do a light wash like this too you can just have the liberty and go in and play like the hair was really intricate to me and a, and a big part of making this piece and character of this woman stand out of, as, as well as the jewelry so I'll go down so you can see some of the jewelry there uh, but to me that's and it, it almost has a photographic um, appeal to it uh, so there again, I should have went a little lighter on the last piece that I did, but, um, you know, it is what it is. Like I said, it'll be the last time I probably do one of those pieces for anyone. If anything, if I do do this technique again, it'll be for me personally. Um, and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to show you. So this, this is there again, uh, one of my favorite and I think most successful oil wash techniques. I'm going to just go up real quick and then I'm going to show you um, a, a mixed kind of um, piece that was done and here you have it here this is Charlie Parker so this is also an oil wash um, technique and it you know it came out relatively well it had the look that I wanted to achieve in this picture and um, it's, it's a different style uh, it's a bit more of a looser style but you can see in the background that same oil the same orange effect that was used at the one that I just showed you of, of the woman with the with the hair uh, this was used as a base and a foundation for this piece now what I did do differently because this is kind of mixed media in this piece I went in with like uh, airbrush and you can see the airbrush in the back but what I do like too about this effect is like you see some of the stain and and how the oil dissipated it there a little bit and it left a really nice effect that I like. Uh, what you see right there is just some of the airbrush. I went over lightly with the airbrush and I did this purposely. I wanted him to kind of glow and if you can kind of see here the um, the glowing effect and I just felt that it added to the character of this piece. So there you have a um, you, you know the same technique I went in with the oil wash that was my foundational part and then after the oil wash was dry I went in I picked out the highlights and then I also um, used the airbrush and you can max max mask this out if you like but I, I didn't I kind of just freehanded it and then um, there again this is a I really enjoy this technique because this is a very you know once you kind of get it down and do it enough times you can really use this as a quick technique to get the desired effect that you want of a profile piece um, thank goodness I used to have glass on this but it kind of it broke so when it broke I felt this piece didn't really need the glass I actually like it open like this and plus it also there's no glare I have to fight with as I'm filming this but as you can see I'm gonna go from the bottom to the top I went in and then what I did do was you know all of what you see here is pencil you know you can see that and to accent some of the hands and and to give that sporadic and the effect of him playing I wanted the energy to come out of him really playing the saxophone so I did that you know around the entire piece there as in the outline to help enhance that glow 
And then I also did, um, this is acrylic paint. So I went in with white acrylic paint for the shirt. And then I also used um, just certain bold colors to accent uh, Mr. Mr. Bird or Charlie Parker in general to pull out the desired result that I wanted. And I, this is one of my favorite pieces and I got a lot of compliments for this piece as well. Um, I've done a couple other um, there in storage though because I would show those as well. I, I did a few other type of um, like saxophone instrumental pieces like this that I really appreciated the result with as well. Uh, so that's it in general. Um, there again this is concludes like an oil wash or you know some might call it a mixed media because it is more than one type of media that's laid down medium that's laid down on these illustration boards and I'm you know let me state that again this is not canvas this is actually a illustration same board that you saw the um, the actual piece of focus which was the military piece is done on a cold press illustration board and um, this is there again to me some of my favorites and what I feel the more successful type of uh, images and what they can look like when you when you kind of master it and, and get it right uh, so thank you for watching and I appreciate and hope that um, if you have any questions please feel free to comment or ask me and I'll do my best to ability uh, I apologize there again for not being able to show me in progress a bit more of actually doing it but um, hopefully this will you know, it, it, with this technique, it is a bit more, a bit of trial and error to an extent. And then the more you do it, like anything else, you'll become better at the desired results. And sometimes those mistakes can be um, just as successful as, <laughs> and then some of the better parts of the piece. But uh, to me, after a good while of doing the technique, um, there again, these are some of my favorites. And I'm very pleased with the results of the last two that I just showed you. So thanks again.